Ah, the sea is kind of rough today. Nothing special, but still, you have that sinking feeling in your stomach. Call it a sense of foreboding. Something bad is going to happen. And then you hear terrified shouts. You turn around and see a giant wave, much higher than the one surrounding it. Is it a tsunami? That's true. When people think of frightening, destructive waves, tsunamis are the first thing to come to mind. But the one that is going to crash against your ship has a different nature. It's a rogue wave. Both tsunamis and rogue waves can lead to catastrophic consequences. But the difference lies in what causes these walls of water and where the destruction they bring about occurs. So, imagine a giant 60-foot-tall wave rolling over your ship. It's a miracle that the vessel doesn't sink. This massive wave, a rogue wave, seems to have appeared out of the blue, very suddenly and unexpectedly. But however mysterious, solitary, and ominous rogue waves may seem, they're actually not that rare. Now, imagine the average room in your house. The ceiling there is likely 8 feet high. A typical two-story house is somewhere between 20 and 30 feet high. And the Statue of Liberty is 111 feet tall if we measure it from the toes to the top of the head. Now you have something to compare rogue waves with. The largest of such waves can reach a height of 50 to 90 feet. To be considered rogue, a wave must appear seemingly out of nowhere and be higher than other waves in the area. But how much higher is still under debate. Some experts think it should be at least twice as high as other large waves in the area, while others disagree. Rogue waves are also steeper than regular waves, which normally take the form of massive swells. This allows ships to maneuver up and down such waves, even when they're really high. A rogue wave, however, looks like a wall of water. And since it's steeper than other waves, it slams into a ship with enormous force, sometimes breaking over the vessel. Another reason why rogue waves are a mystery is that no one has ever filmed the formation of such a wave and followed its life cycle. There are several photos of rogue waves, but for many centuries, the only evidence of their existence was legends and stories told by sailors who survived them. Scientists are still not sure how rogue waves form. But one theory involves wave reinforcement. It happens when two waves interact and their heights get combined. So when a 15-foot wave passes over a 30-foot one, let's do the math. It results in a short-living 45-foot wave. But rogue waves can occur not only in the ocean. On November 10, 1975, on Lake Superior, a group of three rogue waves, also known as the Three Sisters, might have sunk the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, an American Great Lakes freighter. The ship and the crew members were lost in the catastrophe. The waves followed each other too closely, so the ship couldn't recover and shed the water from the first wave before the following one struck. The captain of a ship that was not far from the Fitzgerald reported that his vessel had been hit by two 30 to 35 foot waves. These waves likely followed by a third one, then moved further in the direction of the Fitzgerald and might have caused the sinking. Now, let's wave bye-bye to that, and let's move on to tsunamis. It is an extremely dangerous natural disaster. It's very different from rogue waves. In most cases, a tsunami is caused by an underwater earthquake. Usually, when a tsunami is born, it's just a few feet high. But the closer it gets to the shore, the larger it grows. Soon, it enters shallow waters and starts to slow down. The first tsunami wave crashes against the shore. Its top moves faster than the bottom, and that's what makes the wave so high and steep. The lowest point of the wave gets to dry land first. In the process, it creates a vacuum effect that pulls the water away from the coast, burying the harbor and seafloor. Those who recognize this first sign of an approaching tsunami still have a chance to save their lives. Five minutes later, an enormous wall of water hits the shore and wipes out everything in its way. But it's not just a single wave, there are many. This phenomenon is called a wave train. How fast this train is traveling depends not on how far it is from the source of the waves, but on the ocean depth. Tsunamis can move as fast as a jet plane in the middle of the ocean, but once they enter shallow waters, their speed drops. The first tsunami wave isn't usually the strongest, 
But lots of people don't know it and make the grave mistake that sometimes costs them their lives. After the first wave is gone, they relax and believe the danger is over. That's why the next waves, much bigger and more powerful, catch them off guard. Now, Sometimes, a tsunami comes as a torrent of foaming water. At other times, it makes the sea withdraw, leaving behind stranded fish and overturned boats. Also, if you spot a slight rise in sea level, it might be the sign of an approaching tsunami. The incoming water is the first tsunami wave. The second one can be even larger, and it comes sometime later. You can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami is near. Repeated wave surges can also warn you about a tsunami. If you see unusual swells coming at regular intervals, it might be time to evacuate to high ground. Surprisingly, some of the largest tsunami waves in the world were caused by landslides. For example, a landslide in Latuya Bay in Alaska formed a mega wave, one of the largest ever recorded. Its height was 1,720 feet. The mega tsunami surged over the headland, washing away trees, plants, and soil down to bedrock. The wave reached more than half the height of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest construction in the world. When a third of the East Molokai volcano in Hawaii caved in and collapsed into the Pacific Ocean, it triggered a tsunami the size of one of the tallest buildings in the world, Shanghai Tower. The wave was around 2,000 feet high. Another bizarre and dangerous ocean phenomenon is square waves. They appear when two different wave patterns crash into each other at 90 degrees. It often happens near peninsulas or land where two different seas or oceans meet. This phenomenon does kind of look spectacular, but only if you're watching it from the shore. Don't even think about getting in the water to play with such waves. Cross currents in that spot can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the water. Square waves have caused many shipping accidents over the years, too. And if you see wild, choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed, stay out of the water, too. It can be a sign of a strong rip current. That can carry you far away into the ocean. And now, let me tell you about a much larger, I would even say planet-wide phenomenon called Rossby waves. There are two kinds of such waves, oceanic and atmospheric. But since we're talking about ocean waves, yeah. Slow-moving Rossby waves are totally different from ocean surface waves. They don't look like those waves that break along the shore. No, Rossby waves are giant movements of the ocean stretching horizontally across the planet. They can span hundreds of miles in a western direction and are so massive, they can change the climate conditions of our planet. They contribute to high tides and even flooding in some areas all over the world. The movement of Rossby waves are complicated and depend on the location. For example, in the Pacific, waves that are closer to the equator take from a few months to a year to travel across the ocean. At the same time, waves further away from the equator often need more than 10 years to make this journey. So, as it goes by, be sure to wave! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.